Hey guys, this is Justin from McMurray Hand Forged again, just uh, kind of giving you the old sneak peek of what's going to be coming up in uh, the release on Sunday. Uh, I believe that is the 12th of July. And also to kind of give you a rundown of the small stuff and the big stuff as I make it. So starting with the small. We'll start with uh, some utensils that we're going to do. I had spatulas on the last run, um, so I figured I would do a couple more. These are still pretty hot. This is uh, round two of seasoning, so they're still pretty hot. Um, so we'll start with the spatula here. This is just a standard, standard spatula. It is, of course, it's made of steel, so it's pretty uh, beefy. Nice ring to it, reasonably thin, but still pretty pretty chunky. Uh, it's octagonal handle, punched and drifted. Um, that beautiful chocolate finish from the seasoning. So I have a couple of these. Um, this last run I only had one set and it was a fork and spatula. This time I'll have just a bunch of spatulas because everybody liked the spatula. So. I'll have a few of these. Uh, next item is, I've heard people call these pigtails, I've heard them call them flippers, meat hooks. Ooh, that's still hot. Uh, I call them a flipper. Man, that is hot. It's pretty sharp on that end and it's good for grabbing your steak or a, a big piece of veggie and flipping it on the grill. You grab it and then you just lay it over. This is a rope twist with that same punched and drifted handle. These ones I've been leaving the um, flame cut end on it just because it, I don't know, it looks cool when it's forged down. <laughs> so I leave that on there. All one piece, um, solid carbon steel seasoned just like a pan so that is a steak flipper so our next item are uh, our, uh, our pack skillets which have been pretty popular they're pretty low profile designed to be attached to the outside of your backpack uh, when you're out on the trail and you still want even cook surface uh, it's made of the same the same steel as our bigger uh, pots and pans it's just a little lower profile, and this one's cooled down enough to handle. Um, you can see it's pretty low profile. This one I did kind of leave the handle kicked up a little bit for everyday use. I normally keep the handle pretty flat with the top, um, just so that it straps a little better to the outside of your pack. But I figured this one, it's got kind of a normal length handle. It's not huge long, so a little kick to the handle wasn't too big a deal. This is the gristle handle with the tail. I've heard I've uh, referred to these in the past as the road warrior. I figured it was fitting for one of these little guys. Two rivets. Still very strong. Um, but yeah, still a you know pretty beefy pan. Good for. Uh, even heat for searing uh, fresh caught fish that you just caught in the stream or an egg or um, things like that. You still want that even heat. It's got the nice pan on it. So yeah, that's the little guy, pack skillet. Uh, next up in size is the eight inch skillet. These are, I call them a seven and a half because they're not quite eight inches. Um, of course, dimensions vary. As I'm making these by hand, this has got the briar hard handle and matching lid knob. Um, this is kind of like, oh, nice ring. This is kind of like what you'd see uh, as like an egg skillet or you know a single one person breakfast. Let me put the lid down. Um, it's got sloping sides, kind of like a mix between the full size stir fry and skillet that I make nice cook surface relative to the size of the pan but you still have a decent slope on that wall for uh, moving the food around as you cook these ones of course have um, 
three rivets, just like the full-size pans. It's the same steel as the full-size pan. Um, so it performs just like the full-size pan, but in a smaller package. And the little lid just, just makes it sweet. So I patterned my lids and my pans after uh, seven, early 1700s and, eight, and into the 1800s ironware examples uh, that I've read about. And keep in mind they are patterned after that. It's not a replica. It's just, I don't know, I like that look of the, the way the lid just fits just inside of that sloped, hand, uh, sloped edge. Well, yeah, so that's the seven inch, or excuse me, seven and a half slash eight inch <coughs> skillet. So the next one that's been pretty popular, um, but it is a lot harder for me to make, so I don't make them as often. Um, there's uh, a lot of work to go into drawing something this deep, and that is the seven and a half pot. So I leave these kind of rough. I just, it's personal preference. I just like the way they look. It keeps them rustic looking, you know, because this, when I first saw uh, an early ironware example, it was a pot like this, you know, just a simple little, you know, small pot with a lid that just fit just barely down inside. Um, and it was, it was obviously hand wrought. So on my, on some of my bigger stuff, you can see I, I it's pretty smooth. Um, this is a good example. It's pretty smooth. There's not really much by way of hammer marks in there. Um, but on the, the pots, I tend to leave them kind of in the rough just because it, it kind of adds a little bit of character. This is uh, also a gristle handle. Um, as you can see, it's a little different from the Road Warrior variant. This is just the standard gristle with a hang hole on it. And I like just the simple textured knob that you can grab with your oven mitt. And of course, uh, all this cookware is uh, works on induction ranges, it works on gas, it works on electric, um, and of course open fire, which was uh, the whole reason I started making these was for camping. So let's move all these guys aside and we'll look at the big boy. So this guy is, uh, it's a 12 inch skillet, and it is it's a pretty, pretty heavy, heavy skillet. Um, it is 12 inches, just about on the nose. Um, I gotta drag it over to the camera cause you guys are between me and the work here, <laughs> but it's pretty heavy. Um, it is a, it's a beefy skillet. So these come with a lid. What I like about these is that the lid is very tall. So this is good for a roast or veggies and of course, you get that, that ring. See how long that goes. <laughs> but uh, good for uh, stuff that needs a little bit of altitude. So these are a little deeper as well than the 11 inch skillets that I make. Just a little bit. They're just about as deep as the pot. As you can see, the pot only has maybe Oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch more as far as depth than the big skillet. Um, this is a, we call them a chunky twist or a swirl handle. Uh, it's nice and beefy to match the feel of the pan. But uh, so that extra depth is handy. Of course, it's got the front grip, which is beefy as this pan is. Um, you kind of need it. So this has had... Two passes of the seasoning, just like the others. It'll darken up a little more on that third round. Um, but with the lid on, it is quite deep. Um, or excuse me, there's quite a bit of room in there. Let's see if I can tip it back without losing the lid. Um, it's, it's excellent for roasts, for things that require that extra depth. You can see how deep that is. It's like a almost like a roaster or a Dutch oven. Um, I made, the very first prototype that I made of this 
we have at home and we use and I've taken it camping and I have used it as a Dutch oven I've this the lid is very flat across the top and so you're able to set this right down into the into the coal and uh, either cook with low heat from the bottom or to bake in it um, use it like a Dutch oven by setting it out on a rock near the fire and lining the top with coals so the extra height is nice because then you get that almost like uh, I don't know what else to say but that convection style heating where you that radiant heat from the lid so it's good for biscuits and uh, well when we had camping we used it for biscuits um, but yeah that's the 12 inch I'll have a couple of these available for the uh, the release as well um, so yeah be there or be square we got lots of interesting things uh, for this release oh this is still hot this wasn't part of it this is a regular 11 inch skillet um, and this has a handle variant that I like to call Prometheus just kind of it's like a half Rubik's where the corners have been knocked off um, just an interesting handle so that'll be available as well I'll have a I'll have several of these in both skillet and stir fry oh and just as a size comparison so I think the easiest way to give you a size comparison is to compare the lid for the 12 to the lid or for, to the actual 11 the 11 is swimming in this thing's lid it's just hanging over the edges all the way around so that gives you kind of a size comparison between the two whereas the lid sits down inside the 12 it's hanging over the edges on the on the 11 so um, the 11 has more gently sloping sides as well so the cook surface is a little bit smaller than the tw the uh, the 12 the 12 has about a 10 inch cook surface so all right that's about it thanks for watching uh, if you'd like to stick around on sunday and see what we've got we've got this and more i've got several different varieties that are going to be available for the release uh, several different more pack skillets of different flavors and varieties i've got lots of different handles uh, we will see you sunday thanks for watching bye, -bye.